Montreal. There's a look from Zoran Karic's perspective. He's got Tanner on his right, Marinero is left, and Hector's blast is blocked by a darting John Limniatis. Hector, 265 points last season. He won his third straight MVP award and fourth overall. Well, this is the team on the floor now that the crunch really needs to come through with some offense because Bruce is playing Hector and Zorn again on the same line. Sean Bonian now on the restart. I watched that left foot by Sean, but this is the this is the line that Bruce needs the offense from. Zorn at the controls as usual. John Ball in front of the goal for a loose one, and Scott Schweitzer is creeping in at the back stick. And ball goal! Scott Schweitzer, 2 nothing. Run. We can credit Zoran Karic with that one. Watch Zoran look across the net here and look for Scott Schweitzer. It's that silent communication that works beautifully and Zoran with an absolutely perfect little chip pass over to Scotty for the goal. That's the Crestmont Cadillac first goal brought to you by Crestmont Cadillac in Beechwood. For a limited time, lease the new Cadillac Catera for $379 a month or just $9.99 down. It's the caddy that zigs. Call Bob Rohde at 831-5300 for more details. Find out for yourself why Crestmont is the Cadillac of Cadillac. The, the championship year and just kept the guys going. That's a lot of pressure. Olivero, Limniatis, three-pointer. Otto dove again to his left and got some fingertips on it. Impact trying to work their way out. This is Needham. Got it to Diot. Olivero off the backboards. Ball got a piece of it. Olivero carries on. Tanner strong along the boards. And for a small guy, that's one of his specialties. Three on two for the crunch. Tanner running the controls. Right side. Carrot scores! Soren Carrot from Tommy Tanner. Four nothing. Crunch. Terrific job by Tommy Tanner on this. Tommy controlled the break the entire way. Looks to his right side, there's Zorin, and there's the perfect shot by Zorin, but Tommy set that one up by beautifully handling the ball, bringing it all the way down the field. Nice pass to Zorin, and Zorin almost always executes in that situation. Good strike from Carriage. It came at 11.42. Watch Tanner here now. And he, he, he actually started that play, Jeff, with the work he did down deep in his own end. Drew Limniatis over, and as Limniatis was turning, laid the ball off into the space. Well, we talked to Tommy before the game. He had the flu. He wasn't sure if he was going to play. He had a sore toe, but he sure didn't show any. I hope he does. 30-year-old. His first season in indoor soccer. There's a chip. Mariano the volley. Got it down, but wide. Carriage coming again. Here's another volley. This time it goes wide. Far side. Give him one more chance. Split the difference. And a race is wristic. Got the ball back to work. Kia drills it in. Marinero holds off Dallascat. Dallascat dragged him down to the floor. So the crunch will have a restart. Telesket being very demonstrative, tough player. Earned that reputation with the Buffalo Blizzard. Inside Kia swung and missed, and Carriage puts his hands to his face. Two on one developing for the impact. Here comes Bruno Xavier, shot it wide, the rebound. Smothered by Arp as the horn goes in 15 minutes history now. The crunch with a 4-0 lead after a great chance there from Montreal. They broke out, got the crunch numbers down, but Otto was able to handle it. So after 15 minutes, a 4-0 lead for the crunch. We'll be back. You've been involved in both of the goals. First, a great pass to Scotty. What were you thinking on that? Thank you. Uh, I, I was just, I, first time I faked like I'm going to pass to Hector, and, and they... Uh, a couple guys took off and let us cut it open in the, in the far post. 
before that, I just give him, you know, eye contact. You know, I say, I'm going to pass you, and, and he stayed there, and uh, good finish. Only three points in Milwaukee, Zora, and how critical was it for you guys to come out and get some offense going? Uh, it, it's pretty embarrassing, and, uh, but uh, also we got a lot of young guys, and, and uh, it's just not clicking right now, you know. Uh, all, all veterans and uh, uh, young players, but uh, we're going to be fine. Okay, Zoran, thanks very much. 4 nothing, Ed. Two uh, go Zoran involved in both goals in the first quarter. Yes, indeed, and uh, I think he kind of hit it on the head there that uh, you know, this team is trying to meld the veterans in with the new players. Look at the first quarter stats, and uh, wow, 19-9, to nine, the crunch out shot. The impact... Blocks nine for Montreal, four for the Crunch, and saves eight to four each. Montreal goalkeeper making four apiece. Ciccarelli and Dobson. So it's back to second quarter action. We'll flip the sides, and this time the blue clad impact will move right to left. White Barker in a race off to the corner. Giuliano Olivero. Nice move there, he comes to goal, and he has an opening in, hits the post. The rebound, Hooper, Linden Hooper with the left foot. Off of a bouncing ball, the play created by Giuliano Olivero, and Otto really with no chance. It comes a minute 27 in, and the lead cut in half to 4-2. Well, Otto was kind of hung out on this one, Ed. He needed a little help there and really didn't get it. I'd say so. Watch this ball as they break out. Great ball from Giamara. And Oliveira really did a nice job right there. Otto got a piece of it to make the first stop and was in no position to get the rebound. The Lyndon Hooper, his first goal. Marinero trying to work out of a double team. Montreal wins the ball, and here they come. This is Gene Harbour. Harbour with an opening. The left footer, he scores! We're tied at four. Some great individual efforts from the impact, and they have scored the last two goals. Two goals in less than a minute. A four-to-nothing lead that looked so nice after the first quarter is history now. This is a nice job by Montreal all the way down the floor. Harbour with a great great work. Frank Philo maybe could have cut off Harbour on that. Instead, Frank kind of backed off the ball a little bit and gave Harbour room to make a shot. Cleveland Crunch want a timeout to make sure this doesn't go any farther than it has to. There's the goal scorer and we're tied at four. Who coached them on a youth level in Anoka, Minnesota. Troy's been playing a little forward, too. Oh, there's a great back post run by Moro Biello and the ball perfectly played from Grant Needham. Three straight two-pointers for Montreal here in the second quarter, and they have erased a 4-0 crunch lead. It's now 6-4. And that's three goals in the first three minutes and 15 seconds here of the second quarter. That was just perfect. Set up perfectly the whole way. The kid with the gym shoes he had tomorrow comes through with a goal. <laughs> which he got rather upset. Had a fan or two give away. Here comes Schweitzer, Marinero left side across. Knocked in by Rick Titus. The goal will count, it's for the crunch. Scott Schweitzer putting the pressure on the Montreal defense. And we're tied at six. This was just good aggressive soccer by the crunch. Scotty comes up with the steal. Kicks it over to Hector, right back. And the ball conveniently goes into the net. Scotty will take it. Schweitzer, his second goal today. There's the time Marinero will get an assist here. Scott now with a pair of goals on the season. He had three assists in the win over Harry. The crunch will peel back. Lyndon Hooper has a goal for Montreal. He's on a run into the corner. Plays the backboard. Biello there again, who tapped it home. It's an 8-6 lead. Moro Biello making the back stick runs, and it's paid off twice. Otto's down here. Referee checking it out. This is, this is just very nice by Montreal. Off the board. There's Biello. There's the goal. 8-6, Montreal on top again. 
Watch Hooper. No just bring it along. A step on Kia. Frank Follow that time left in the wake of Yellow. Yellow has two goals and he touched the ball twice. One on each goal. Just blocking it home. Got himself in a good position a couple of times. There's a battle for the ball. Checkerelli will come off and head it aside. Foul will be called against Montreal and the Crunch will get a free kick in the corner. And Carriage and Terriner was looking for a call, says he was held up. Good decision there by John Ball. And then he ran really Dulliscat off the ball. Dulliscat will draw the foul. It's going to be called against John Ball. And a penalty is going to be handed out here against the Crunch, and I think John Ball. John's a pretty feisty player. Yeah, he is. He's very, very physical out there. Of course, last year he was on the NPSL's all-rookie first team. was the Crunch Rookie of the Year. And he is a feisty guy out on the floor. Well, Sean, I mean, uh, John definitely threw him off the ball there. The foul was against him. Once again, we haven't gotten an official announcement of what the penalty would be against, but both Tanner and... Ball are in the penalty box. It's one misconduct. Misconduct will be to Tanner, and Ball will go off for pushing. Here's the shootout. Gene Harbour drills it. He's after it. Not over to collect. Time of the penalty, 7.33. So Tanner will be gone for five minutes because of the misconduct, so they'll be without his services. Wow, wow. 10 minutes for Tanner, who overstepped. His boundaries with the official, and he's still going at it with him. So Tanner really is gone for the rest of this half. And then in to the third quarter, Gene Harbour's right foot, it got blocked. Otto able to take the rebound. There you see what the crunch has done on the penalty kill unit. A giveaway, Grant Needham scores! It's worth a point. Make it a three-point lead for the Montreal Impact, the power play goal. Crunch sloppy with the ball. That's exactly it. Otto comes out, brought the ball a little, a little too far out, perhaps. Needham with nobody back. This makes it absolutely uh, ridiculous looking for the crunch. Watch the finish there by Grant Needham. He knew the, the goal was open. All he did was neatly take it down and one-time it. It's at 7.46 the time of the goal. It's going to be unassisted and worth one point. Well, the crunch has been outscored nine to two now, and we're halfway through roughly the second quarter. This has not been a good quarter. It's four to nothing, crunch going into the quarter, and outscored now. You see Sean Boney today. Here comes Harbor again, and his own end. Oh, Philo ran into Harbor, and they're going to call a two-minute penalty against. I believe Gene Harbour, and I'm wondering what the PK call, or the penalty call is here. Just looked like Gene went in strong there, unless there was something I missed. Carriage actually hit the ball with his hand. I don't know about that one. And yeah, that seemed like both guys just being aggressive going after uh, the ball. They call his elbow was out, so they're going to call him for elbowing, but I don't think that was the focus of that 50 50 collision there. Carriage now will go one on one. This is worth a point. The crunch trail by three. Ceccarelli is out. Z still working in. And he didn't get it off in time. I thought I heard a whistle before the shot. You've got five seconds to shoot it. And he waited just a little bit too long, so the goal will not count. Well, that was one of the cutest little shots yes. you'll ever see, wasn't it? Yep. <laughs> Let's be dainty. Get the goalkeeper out of position, and it worked just a little too late. Crunch 0 for 1 on the power play. They had six shots early, as you saw there by the graphic. 
It's Carriage, Marinero, Boney, Kia, and Ristic out for the crunch against Titus, Lemniatis. Fiat, Dallasquet. Comes Zorn, right side in the corner. Ristic had trouble with that one off the board. Lemniatis is a good, solid defender. He wears the captain's armband for Montreal. 30-year-old. Arrow and Carriage play a little catch. They continue to do so. Ball bouncing a bit. Now Zia bouncing ball, knocked it wide. Boney took it off of his chest. Arrow and Kia. Kia tried to get a ball across, but didn't make it there. Bella Scott flies in the air to knock it onto the foot of the work. Under a minute on the crunch power play. As Jeff told you, they've been outscored nine to two in this quarter. Great breakout from Montreal. Here comes Dulleskett. He's knocked off the ball by Boney, and he's going to go for two minutes. Took away a scoring chance from the Montreal Impact. Dulleskett fit like a rag doll in that con collision. It, it, it looked like Boney barely hit him. Right. And he went flying. And then Bulleskett had a few words for Boney, which might not have been the smartest thing that he's ever done in his life. But Sean just kind of dropped an arm there and, and knocked him knocked him to the turf. On the referee's estimation, Dulleskett was off and running to goal, so it'll be a shootout, and defender John Limniatis will go one-on-one. -on -one. There's the time of the penalty. What time at home. It's a one-point goal for Limniatis on the shootout. 10-6, Montreal. He didn't waste any time with that one, did he? No, he didn't. No cute. No strategy. Otto came out of the goal. Limniatis took it high and scored. And makes a 10-2 impact here in the second quarter. Well, once again, the crunch was looking so good in the early going. First quarter, they led 4 to nothing. They also outshot Montreal 19-9 in that first quarter. Now it's power play soccer, not yet. There's still 40 seconds of overlap here, so we can play four aside. Any goal score now will be worth two or three points. Or you're missing the net just a little bit. That, that wears on you mentally, and sometimes you question yourself a bit. There's gonna be another blue card handed to John Ball, so the Crunch keep digging themselves a bigger hole to climb out of. They're gonna be short again for the next two minutes as Gilano Oliveira was taken down by John Ball. He's got a few words for Gene Harbour. This penalty is going to come at 12.43, as you see. Limniatis will take it again. He wasted no time with the shootout last time against Orff. One touch and a drill home. Let's see if he changes it up here. Same modus operandi. He's got a couple of shootout goals. Limniatis. This time goes low left on Orff. It's worth a point. Make it 11-6 Montreal. Watch this. Simple touch. Look for an opening. Curl it in right side. And he's very happy about that. Limniatis has scored the last two goals for Montreal, and now they go to the power play. Up by five. Yellow has to scramble a little bit as the crush, crunch put on some pressure high. Schweitzer is called for the foul there. That's a good look at the 26-year-old from North Carolina State. Played into the corner. We've got two minutes to play for the second quarter here at the CSU Convocation Center. The attempt there by Giamaro. You know what? You can get in on many season ticket plans if you uh, are so inspired. And the Crunch has some great plans to get you involved. Five games get 15% off the single game price. There you see it. Prices start at $60. Then the uh, power play plan, 
say that ten times really fast. And you can get more information on these mini ticket plans by calling the Crunch Office at 440-349-2090 or 330-535-KICK. It's a great way to get involved in Crunch Soccer. The defending American Conference champs as Otto heads off to the bench. Timeout called on the field. We got a minute 51 to have a free kick. They're still shorthanded here with ball off. Tripping was the call. Carriage chips it across. The volley a goal! A shorthanded goal by Frank Philo at the back stick. He struck it on the screws. Carriage will get an assist. It comes at 13-34. And the crunch within three. Big goal for the crunch shorthanded. Wow. Watch it again. Another chipped ball. Philo did well to get it down. Dobson had to go post to post. And he had no chance. Watch it one more time. Philo got it down. Frank Philo's first goal in a crunch uniform. Gives him four points on the season. He's got a couple of assists to go with that. The Crunch has stopped a five-point run. It comes short-handed, and they're within three. Here's Yellow, got a left footer off as he looks for the hat trick. Foul called against Olivero there, and seeing the Crunch hit it with his hand, with their hand. And we're down to a minute to go in the first half. Carriage with yellow all over him. Tries to locate the ball, got a touch in. Can't come out of that scrum. Early ball from Harbor to Olivero. The impact running with numbers. Barker tried to get it back, couldn't. Marinero got stopped on his way out. Tackle by Schwarzer, foul will be called. Scott not happy with the call, free kick there. Schweitzer with a pair of goals. He is now in the wall facing a Gene Harbor attempt. They slid it to Olivero. He didn't get much on it. Nato still had to make the stop, but Giuliano could have handled that a bit better. A blue card will come out as Marinero taken down on his way to go. So the blue cards are flying tonight. The Crunch able to draw a penalty. They'll get a shootout and a power play here in the final 31 seconds of the first half. Hector came into today's action with 21 points. Watch him here. Used the wall to get around Biello. And Morrow held him up. And Karatu is 0 for 1 on the shootout. Karatu goes one on one with Stuart Dobson this time. Will play the backboards. Can't get there as Dobson on to the wall and now those two guys have a few words. Frustration boiling over a bit here at the Convocation Center. Harris tried to use the boards there, the two fell on one another and then the extra curriculars began. Now when this gets sorted out, Crunch will have a free kick and then begin a power play that will last at least 31 seconds here. Let me take that back. There's still 14 seconds on the tripping penalty to John Ball, so we'll play four aside here. The remaining 14 seconds. A couple of bench penalties have been handed out to each bench for leaving their confines. Bruce Miller wants a clarification here from Gary Huber. And now they have that straightened out, so we'll get back to play. Punch with Carriage Marinero and Key along with Nicky Ristic. Gary Huber still straightening things out on the field down there. It's 
Stuart Dobson has been called upon a couple of times to uh, get into the game. First, uh, Kyle Ceccarelli was called for a penalty in the first quarter. And then Ceccarelli took a, a wicked blast off of the face from the foot of Zoran Karic. And uh, actually, Ceccarelli has just made his way back on to the bench for Montreal. He was in the locker room getting attended to. It had opened up a cut over his left cheekbone. Some changes being made here. So three aside now because of the bench penalty. That, that's what the whole discussion was, is how many players should be on the field. Schweitzer nicks in, makes the tackle. Then ran into Patrick Diot. And a foul called against Montreal. Crunched down by three. They led by four early in this game, but have trailed by as many as five. Ten seconds on the clock. Here comes Carrot, still moving in. He got the shot up and scored! With two seconds on the clock, a power play goal for the crunch. It's worth a point. Zoran Karic, who has himself two goals along with a pair of assists. And the Crunch get one back. They trail it by two now. Well, Z was very patient. He had Patrick Diot up there, and he slid it back to the left side of Dobson. I don't know if Stewart actually saw that shot or not. Power play goal, unassisted by the crunch. Get two goals late, and there's the horn. Out of wharf, making his way to the crunch locker room. Well, it wasn't the prettiest of second quarters for the crunch without question, but uh, a couple of late goals, one by Fallow, the other by Carriage, has gotten them a bit of momentum. And they trail by two at the halftime. Fun continues here at the CSU Convocation Center as the crunch and the Montreal Impact are having at it. And our guest here now at halftime is the commissioner of the NPSL, Steve Paxos. Steve, welcome in. Um, I guess my first question is kind of bring the fans up to date on what uh, what's up with the NPSL, the league, what they can expect, and that type of thing. Well, you know, I, I think we're having uh, probably one of our best years open. The home openers are averaging over 9,000. We're very close to working out a deal for a national TV deal. I'm hoping to know some in the next two weeks. Uh, overall, we're very pleased, and uh, we're forging ahead. Now, uh, th there's been a lot of changes uh, coming into this season with uh, Toronto maybe taking a little bit of a sabbatical for the year, and there's been realignment with Columbus moving up to Montreal. How has all that happened? And give us an idea of maybe how much stronger it's made the league. Well, I, I think with Toronto sitting out and organizing for a year, we got very one of our weak sisters uh, it definitely on the field. Uh, bringing Milwaukee into the Cleveland division, I think it uh, speaks for itself. Cleveland is struggling a little bit. Milwaukee is undefeated. I think overall you're going to see a very competitive situation uh, league-wide. How about the, the player situation? For the first time in a long time, there's been an agreement now between the NPSL and the CISL to share players. Uh, give us your viewpoint on, on how that's going to help things out. Well, there was an outcry, you know, from players in the other leagues that wanted a chance to compete in our league. Uh, you know, we had a problem developing our, you know, our bottom half of the rosters. You know, you know, we struggled with 13, 14, 15 men out. Uh, this gave the opportunity for the teams to strengthen themselves. Uh, so, you know, we, we permitted uh, and we had a supplemental draft to let CSL players and the indoor, uh, Eastern Indoor Soccer League players come in. And I think uh, it, it speaks well for the league because now we have like a feeder system where we can bring some of the younger kids in to, to supplement what we have. You know, Steve, I'm, I'm curious, you know, with the fact that you got to run this league all the time and, and you're concerned with the problems and the good things, do you ever get the chance to really just sit back and enjoy soccer? Uh, it, it's really a 12-month uh, <laughs> job, uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. But I do enjoy it. You know, I try to travel as much as I can and visit every city. And uh, this is my first game in Cleveland. I'm somewhat excited. Uh, uh, is there any, like, younger players that, have, that you've seen so far that kind of stick out and you go, you know, I like that guy? 
Well, you know, uh, Buffalo has a kid named Evan Whitson that came from the uh, Eastern Indoor Soccer League that, uh, that's got some promise. I know Montreal's got a couple of young guys. And, of course, Cleveland always has a couple of guys hiding someplace. Uh, Sean Bonnie has done a tremendous job. And, you know, you, you like to see young talent come in. Okay, Steve, thanks for spending some time with us. Thank you. That's Steve Paxos, the commissioner of the NPSL. We'll be back here at CSU after a timeout. Out on the floor, and we're ready to go here. It's showtime in the second half. The crunch down by two. By the way, Paolo Ceccarelli is back in the goal for Montreal. There's a give and go. Needham with his pass, the return pass to Biello, too far in front of him to handle. And this is Patrick Diaz in a race with ball. Otto has it. Garrett's looking for help. The crunch actually running three on four now. No numbers there, so Z will slow it down. He's going to let that pass from Schweitzer take care of itself. Needham now against Schweitzer. The two hey! barrel into the corner, and Needham came away with it. His shot partially blocked. It made it to the front of the crunch goal. Here comes Limiatis for Diaz. Needham, Aaron Arrow recovering nicely. Otto's going to be able to handle that. I think Otto made a nice comment with the fact that the team's playing with a little fire now, and that Bruce Miller said the same thing. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Well, the, the Milwaukee loss yesterday was really disheartening for these guys. 16 to 3, and that's against the team you blew the 17 to 3 halftime lead against. I mean, they were embarrassed twice in a row by Milwaukee. And they weren't very happy about it. Zorin wasn't, Otto mentioned it, and Bruce talking about a little emotion. And uh, this team has had such success over the years that maybe it takes something like that to get them going. Well, hopefully they can find that fire and, and keep it burning. But you shouldn't have to manufacture that stuff. Just be part of what you do. He bangs it wide. Comes Limniatis on his way to goal, tipped in by Giamara as he is making a back stick run. A two point goal for Montreal, 13 to 9 impact. The crunch with a nice run late in the first half to get right back into it, but Montreal goes back out to a four point lead now. And again, this was just a nicely executed bit of soccer by Montreal. Nice pass off the boards. Limniatis make it that made it there by getting a step on Kia. 5.36 the time of the goal. Giamaro with his first goal of the game and of the season for Montreal. Here comes Kia as a bit of room. Now to Tanner, who is finally back on the floor. Remember, Tommy had two five-minute misconducts that he had to serve out. Boney on the turn. He mishit that terribly. And he had Kia and Tanner. Here comes Biello over to cut him off. Schweitzer back to Diod on his way. He scores! That is a great breakout by Montreal. They have scored the last two 15 to 9 impact. Wow. Here comes Biello. Beautiful centering pass. Most of Montreal's goals today have just been textbook. They look terrific and they're up 15 to 9. Some concern on the faces here at the Convocation Center, and uh, they should be. I think I said Diod got that goal. It was Needham that scored. Goals, and his goals have come from hard work. And an assist. Lloyd Barker tags one off Marinero and out. I think they're going to do this again. And that's much to the chagrin of Hector Marinero, who has to stand in that wall again. With Tommy Tanner this time. Yamara scores with a left footer that snuck inside the short post. A restart, it comes at 9.59. 17 to nine, this is the biggest lead of the game for Montreal. And again, it's just very crisp. Nice pass, nice kick. That's just well executed. There's 
Not Jumara. much else to be said about that. Jumara has a lethal left foot. John Ball did what he could to get out and try to close down that space. Don't know if Otto had a full look at it the entire way, but it snuck inside. Oh, that's a three-point goal. My mistake there. One, two. So it's worth three points. Make that 18 to nine. Into the path of a racing Olivero, deep in the corner. Wistick got a nick on. Back out to Yellow. 40 seconds on the Montreal power play. Left footer by Gimaro, this is wide. Olivero got it down, Otto slapped it out twice. Ooh, cat like reflexes there. And a foul call against Montreal. Frustration is just the best word for this situation right now. Players fired up. They're not getting much accomplished out on the field. I think the, the fans here are, are a bit stunned as well. You know, we keep coming back to the fact that the crunch, their fans, the people surround them are, are used to winning. Two championships. Especially here at home. Oh, no doubt. Power play is now over, and Troy Dusoski will make his way back onto the field. And wins the ball away from Oliveira. Whistle and a foul against Montreal, and Schweitzer got lucky there. It was not the smartest of passes at that juncture. The field. You see Joe Raduca back there clapping his hands. New assistant coach for the crunch. Dumped in, Tanner there. Tries to get it under control to Marinero, and Ceccarelli beat him there. Tony Dore from Lorraine Catholic High School in Bowling Green now in the game for the Crunch, number six. A steal, three on one for the Crunch. Let's see what they got. Garrett can't get it past. Really, Dallas got. And we've got a timeout on the floor, so we'll take a break. The Crunch looking at a 19-9 hold. They're down by nine, late third quarter. Cleveland Crunch off to a one and three start for the 97-98 season. They will have a free kick to put the ball back in play. Carriage is over it. He's got Tony Dore out high. The chip to Marinero, the head ball. He hit the post again and a save by Ceccarelli. Uh, Jeff said it a few times, frustration, and that's what one Hector Marinero needs to be feeling. He's had some opportunities that Hector normally cashes in on with his eyes closed and he's hitting posts or uh, the ball's getting saved by the Montreal keeper. This is Patrick Diot. A little hesitation moving almost pocketed one going through the defense by himself. Here come the impact again. Diot with the turn. That's in the seats and the crunch will get it back. Double O started his, actually the first ever All-Star game he was selected to was played in his hometown of Buffalo. It's actually from Elma, New York, but Buffalo is the main metropolis. Adam considers himself there. Good work by Mauro Biello. Ciccarelli will get it the length of the floor. Backing up is Schweitzer as the horn sounds. Three quarters in the book. Crunch get shut out in the middle 15 minutes. Make that the third 15 minutes of the game. And they get outscored 7-0 in the quarter. And they trail by 9 now. They score 18-9 Montreal. There's some work to be done. Let's see if the Crunch can do it. Crunch down 18 to nine, heading into the fourth quarter. Scott Schweitzer, what has Montreal been doing so well back in there uh, up against the goal? Uh, I think we're just messing up every once in a while. We lose our concentration, marking and tracking players, and they just put them in. I mean, they're not getting good long shots. They're getting tappings back post. 
it's got the uh, emotion seems to be coming back a little bit. You guys seem pretty fired up today about, about this situation. Going into the fourth quarter, what do you have to do? We just got to play and find out what kind of team we are. Win or lose, we're going to find out what kind of team we are. All right. Scott, appreciate it. No problem. Thanks. Scott Schweitzer, everybody. 18-9. to 9. Eddie, they need some offense. Yes, they do, Jeff. And, you know, they need to find it quickly. And you would think that it would be easily found here at the Convocation Center. But look at this statistic. As in the last five quarters at home, Crunch has been ripped. And you know what? In the past, this has always been a building that other teams feared coming home or coming to because the Crunch has been so dominant. That mystique is in danger of slipping away. Hector Marinero just with an assist this evening. I say this evening, but uh, we're really in the afternoon. Showtime fourth quarter, the Crunch down nine. In the NPSL, nine points can disappear quickly, but not with shots like that. John Ball on the run, tried to volley it. He got way underneath that. Finally collected by a fan. And he makes a good toss, the triumphant cheer. Tells you this is the only game in the NPSL today. In addition to what the Crunch did yesterday, Kansas City defeated uh, Detroit 6-5. Detroit has turned into a very defensive-minded, solid-working team. Harrisburg defeated Edmonton 16-8, and Philadelphia was a 12-9 winner over Baltimore. Here come the Crunch. Aaron Arrow never made it to Schweitzer. Olivero early, Needham. Ball over there to slow him down. And now Gene Harbour. Once again, I think the crowd here at the Convocation Center just stunned. And I believe it's probably carrying it over from the last two efforts the Crunch have put forth here on this carpet. Good turn by Needham. He's slowed up by Schweitzer. No give and go on that occasion from Montreal. The backboards. Ball holds off Olivero. Tanner with a burst of speed. Tommy Tanner splits two. Coming into a crowd and Lyndon Hooper making the recovery run. Here comes Patrick Diot. Kia shows him the far boards. Lemniot is tripped by Kia. That ball will belong to Montreal. And this crunch team, as we've seen it in the past, Kia just got bopped with the ball there. Did you see that? Yes, I did. Uh, you know it's a bad day when you're down, hurt, and you get hit with the ball. Insult to injury. Yeah. This team in the past has always been very capable of scoring nine points in a quarter, ten points in a quarter, whatever it takes offensively to get it done. It'll be interesting to see if they're able to do that today because obviously they have not played up to their usual standards. New player out on the floor for the crunch. Good luck here, Ed. Azenwa Ikoronye. Very nice. Thank you. We're going to call him now that Easy. Yeah, now that you've said his name, yeah. we'll just call him Easy. He spent some time with the Nigerian youth national team, U-17s and U-21s. He wears number seven, has the dreadlocks working, and he stands in the wall right now with Chad James. Another the rest a little slow on that instant. Lloyd Barker tries to use the wall around ball. John stepped in, got a good backfield pass. Here comes Tanner. He shoots it, hits the post, headed home by Marinero. Well, if you're looking for a spark, maybe the Crunch finally got the bounce of the ball they were looking for. Whoa, there's a spark for you. <laughs> can you show that on a Sunday on a family program? I guess you can. I guess you can. Hector Marinero in perfectly the right spot at the right time. Tommy Tanner trying to make something happen, got it close, and the ball just kicked right over to Hector. 
Hector puts it in with a head. Good work on that play, too, by John Ball, who initially won it, the ball, out high. Marinero with his first goal of the game. Tommy Tanner. Wow, there's a milestone for you. 800 career goals, but by the look on Hector's face, that doesn't mean a hill of beans right now. Tanner with the 100th assist of NPSL play. So a couple of milestones reached there by the front. Tommy Tanner has two assists this evening. Ups his point total for the season to 11. He really came in in great shape. He told me he dropped 12 pounds. Here's the restart. It hit Marinero. And Hector with a bit of a, a grin on his face. He couldn't get out of the way of that rocket. Tanner. Still in a dance with Limniatis. Carriage tried to get it through. It got busted up. Ball squirts out for Schweitzer. A posting carriage. He tries to turn the odd. Got it off the board. Goal! John Ball! The crunch with two quick ones. It's now a five-point game. Real nice work by both Zorin and Ball on this. Watch Zorin. He's trying to make something happen. And watch John Ball come to the net. Off the boards, and there's John. Went right to the net to get the ball coming from Zorin. Four points in less than a minute. And a crunch with a spark. We come back with another look at the goal that got the crunch within five points. Zorin takes it to the boards, kicks it off the boards, and there's John Ball, right where he's supposed to be. Well, that goal reminiscent of the two that Moro Biello scored exactly. for Montreal, and it's just a case of crashing the goal. John Ball has turned into an offensive defenseman for the crunch. So that's what they thought they had when they traded for Matt Knowles last year, something they wanted to add to the team. So if John can pick that up, it'll be a big help for the crunch as the season continues on. Otto darts off the line and plays Marinero. Hector with some space. Dallas Kent is over there to shut him down. Marinero drills it home! Oh, boy! Hector Marinero, I think it's a three-pointer. We'll have to watch it again for the crunch with three quick goals. Woo! We talked about the type of offense this team is capable of, and this is the first time we've seen it in a couple of games. Auto Warp, great outlet pass. Leads Hector very nicely. Hector on his own, slows it up, kind of looks for his spot, and he sees it at the top of the net. They're going to give him two on this. Makes it 18 to 15, crunch with three goals here to start the fourth, and they're right back in at 18 to 15. Well, Otto Orff will get an assist, as you said, and this will come at the 6-13 mark. The crunch has scored six points in two minutes and seven seconds. Hector pleading his case, but I believe the referees were on that. So it's a three-point game. I think Montreal wants a timeout here. Let's get another could... look at that if we can. Don't know if I completed my thought, but Otto had 19 assists a couple of seasons ago, which is an NPSL record. So we've got a break in the action and a break up here. The crunch with six straight. They are within three. The rule is on or behind the line, it's three. Uh, I'd say on. It looks like three to me. <laughs> but if nothing else, that goal has revved up everybody. The CSU Convocation Center and the guys trying to make the comeback. Good timeout called by Johan Arnio. He's got to make sure his young team is able to get things straight again and play the way they had for the last two and a half quarters. A push against Schweitzer. Scott comes away with a smirk, but 
Knocked him off the ball. The defense really, really has to be strong here in the final 820 because the crunch can't afford to give up any more points. When you're trying to catch up, you don't want to increase, uh, increase the deficit. Harbor shot is blocked by a couple of, of crunch players, Tanner and Marinero. Well, the other thing that happens, Jeff, here is when he's handling that long outlet. For carriage. Across the goal mouth. Marinero laid on it. Tanner got a foot in ball. Yellow beat him to it. Carriage with Dulles get taken down. And a two-minute blue card will be handed to really Dulles get. Rudy is saying he got elbowed before he ever came in. There's Rudy up against Zorin. And it looks like Rudy just kind of took him low, huh? Zorin swung that right elbow. But it's a shootout and a power play for the Crunch. The Crunch will try Kia now this time. They have been unsuccessful in shootouts to this point. Here comes Kia, one touch, knocked it wide. I don't know if Paolo got a piece of that, but the Crunch come up empty on the one-point shootout, and now go to the power play. It's rare, too, that the Crunch has such trouble on shootouts because yeah. with scores like Kia and Hector and Zorin, they usually have a very high percentage on shootouts. Tripping is a call on Rudy Delisket for the penalty. It comes at 9-11. Power play soccer for the Crunch. Right side, Tanner, side foots it, the volley missed. And Karam's off to the near boards. Tanner, the first one there. Does well to hold off the mark by Patrick Diot. Tanner with a look of determination on his face. Carriage across. Marinero will play Bonia. Not enough weight on that pass. Crunch fortunate. it. There wasn't a breakaway to their own goal. Tanner couldn't control that pass from Boney. Battle will have to scramble over to get it. A one-point goal would get the crunch within a pair. Sean not doing a good job of protecting the ball there. Over and back called against Montreal. Good look at Patrick Piotti. 117 left in the Montreal penalty. Tecarelli slapped it aside. Aside from losing various parts of his face, Tecarelli's a great game. Man, oh man. No, and even Stuart Dobson, when, when he came in, actually that's when the, the impact took the lead. Here's a two-on-one developing. Marinero got in the passing lane. And it's a good thing, too, because Viola was all by himself. Making one of his patented far post runs. 45 seconds to go on the man up. Montreal will come out and pressure the ball. Aaron Arrow, Boney, his shot is blocked by Livniatis. Sean a little slow. Yep. Getting that developed inside there. There's a drive by Carriage and misses high. Here comes Grant Needham. A two on one, three on two. And the Crunch scrambling to get back. Finally, Tommy Tanner into the picture. And the Montreal Impact will successfully kill this off. Grant Needham just on the walk in a park. Nobody's challenging. Yadis of first. Showed the far boards. Wow, the impact. Nice job of possession. Now a steal. An open net. Three-pointer. Marinero worked tied. Hector Marinero. The hat trick. A three-point goal. It's 18 apiece. Well, there's an MVP coming through for you. Hector Marinero with his third goal here in the fourth quarter when the crunch has to come back and Hector brings them back. 
Ciccarelli came way out. It's one of the few mistakes that Ciccarelli has made today. Uh, Marinero with the vision to see that Ciccarelli was out, just slid in with the left foot. Lemniatis didn't know that Marinero was creeping in. No question about that one being a three, huh? Not at all. It comes at 11.32, Marinero with eight points in the game. He now has 29 for the season. And he is uh, vaulted now into the number one scoring position on the table. In the end, yeah, Schweitzer ran into the slide of Biello, and Ciccarelli will get it, but Biello pushed Schweitzer off the ball, and the Crunch have a chance here with five seconds. They're going to call a timeout, make sure they work up a play correctly. Well, the start of the fourth quarter, we mentioned the Crunch is capable of a big offensive quarter, and they turn around and, and have exactly that. Hector Marinero, three goals here in the fourth quarter. John Paul with another, and the Crunch with nine points, tying it all up at 18. Easily the best they've looked in, what, six, seven quarters. No doubt about it. And I, you know, maybe what this team needed was a little bit of a wake-up call, because they, they, were, they were sleeping. I think they had four wake-up calls. Yeah. It was ringing off the hook, and they had their head buried in the pillow. Or something. Well, they got some good contributions, as you mentioned, from Easy and Chad James. Just when you know they needed a little Added bit of a little a, bit of a spark. Yeah. yeah. Gave their starters a chance to rest. Crunch has only scored on one restart so far in the game. We haven't seen Sean Boney's left foot yet. And we've talked about that, Ed. He's in the game right now. Make John that ball, not make, tight. Yeah, make that two. Schweitzer and Philo. Here's Otto Orff. He scores! Otto Orff snuck into the play and has given the Crunch a 2018 lead. Boy, that's calling up a play, huh? Otto just kind of snuck his way down the field. Nobody noticed. Most importantly, the Montreal Impact. That one worked exactly according to plan. Still three seconds left in the game. Watch Otto come into the shot here. There he is, sneaks out up top. No defenseman. And a clean shot from Otto or 20 to 18. Crunch with 11 points here in the fourth quarter to take the lead. That is a gutsy call by Bruce Miller because if that doesn't work out, You're you got an open goal open. on the other side. Granted, there were only five seconds left, and taking a chance with that little time, not as big at another occasion, but Otto didn't hit it hard, Jeff. He just got the side foot. Look at Bruce. Hey, pretty good coaching there, huh? Great call. <laughs> That's tough, too, because... I mean, Otto was way on top when he kicked that thing. It wasn't It wasn't like it would be an easy goal anyway. But boy, it sure worked perfectly. And of course, Otto has a lot of very good soccer skills, more yes, than probably most goalies. One of the better goalkeepers in the league with his feet. Only three seconds left on the clock. Sixth attacker mode for the Montreal Impact, but they've got to play the ball forward before everybody races toward the goal. This is going to be like an onside kick, Jeff. Guys are just going to... Once again, that ball has to go forward. It has to roll one revolution forward. Well, if it stays this way, this is the type of emotional comeback win. Otto got it up, but there's the horn. It's a 2018 victory for the Crunch. They were down 18 to nine going to the fourth quarter and came back and won it. That's an unbelievable finish. Just a great fourth quarter all the way around and Otto Orff coming up with a game winning goal. How often do you say that about a goalkeeper? Unreal. Congratulations all around. Crunch made it tough for themselves, but they sure provided some excitement here. 2018, the final. We'll be back. The Cleveland Crunch on Sports Channel is brought to you by BP. We keep...
There's the final score of the crunch of the big fourth quarter. Wow, they went That's in. a strange scoreboard. 20 to 18 as they get their second victory of the year to go to two and three on the season. We've got some post-game awards to hand out. Here's the Fila change the game MVP. Hector getting eight points. Didn't score a goal until the fourth quarter. And that three-pointer there got the crunch tied at 18. Without a doubt, the BP big play of the game, Otto Orff sneaking up on the final restart. He scores the goal from Zoran Karic. Comes with three seconds left in the game. Otto, who made some early saves, got the game-winning goal. That's the BP big play of the game. And our Brian and Stratton defender of the game is John Ball, who scored a key goal in the fourth quarter. All in all, the crunch defense bench not really great but they came forward when they had to in the end, and John Ball contributed offensively as well as defensively and got that big goal there. So that those are our post-game awards. We've got a few more words for you after this timeout at 2018 Crunch Wins.